Well, the Hindenburg disaster still captures the curiosity of so many. And joining us right now is Dan Grossman, an aviation expert and a man who lives and breathes the history <laughs> of the Hindenburg. Dan, good to meet you. Thank you. Good to meet you. All right, let's start with what the Hindenburg was all about, because this was almost 80 years ago. It's hard to imagine what was inside this airship. What was inside the airship was mostly hydrogen, hi hydrogen, which is highly flammable, and then a very small passenger compartment and a compartment for mail. So you had this 804 foot long vehicle filled with flammable hydrogen, which existed solely to transport this tiny little passenger compartment across the Atlantic. 804 feet. I mean, that's almost three football fields put together just for this airship. It's longer than the entire U.S. Capitol from end to end, including the House of Representatives and the Senate. Unbelievable. And so Huge. this kind of brings about emotions of the Titanic. You know, people looked at the Titanic and they said, this is an amazing feat of engineering. This cannot sink. Was there that kind of feeling with the Hindenburg or did they know that there were some hazards with this kind of travel? The people who knew what they were talking about knew that this was basically a flying bomb. There had been many serious airship disasters before the Hindenburg with loss of life in the dozens, including hydrogen airships like R101 that crashed and burned in France um, about seven years before this. So the people who knew the technology knew that this was very dangerous and that they were literally playing with fire. So what actually happened on this day then? Is this something that was expected to happen inevitably at some point, or was it a free collection of a lot of things that went wrong at the same time? Well, it was a lot of things that went wrong at the same time, but mostly it was actually the weather. There were some very strict rules that uh, they had of how to operate a hydrogen inflated airship in weather, and they violated some rules that had been established over decades. So they were sort of asking for trouble. So what was the weather that led to this disaster? Well, you had a lot of thunderstorms. You had a highly electrically charged environment. Mm -hmm. And when you're operating with hydrogen, which is highly flammable, you have to be very careful when you have sparks. And if you have a thunderstorm, you're going to have sparks. And that's what they had. Dan Grossman, thank you for the insight on thank this. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, back to you guys.